Okay, let's get started. Welcome to the session. I hope everyone has enjoyed that day at KubeCon. I'm Yuan Chen from Apple Cloud Services team. I've been working on Apple Kubernetes infrastructure. I've been an uh, active contributor to Kubernetes project with a focus on scheduling. Security is something new to me, so I'm still learning. Yeah, um, and yeah, yeah I'm also at Apple uh, over in the field engineering team, so helping work with various customers across, uh, across the company to make sure that they're kind of successful on our Kubernetes platforms and working with you on this migration. Okay, here is the agenda of our talk. I'm going to give an introduction overview of different uh, service account token in Kubernetes and the parameters and the feature gates that can be used to manage and configure the tokens in Kubernetes. Then all different uh, kind of the tokens, their implications and potential impact on different use cases. I will also talk about uh, and how to track and monitor and, uh, different service account tokens in Kubernetes. Then James will deep dive into uh, how can we and uh, seamlessly and uh, upgrade or transition from the traditional old legacy token to the more dynamic time bound and more secure tokens. So if we look at the service and the account token, API token Kubernetes, uh, token is a piece of information that authenticate application container port to API servers. It's very important to secure and manage tokens properly because token and uh, this is used to grant class resources to different applications. Any of the compromise, right, can have significant uh, security implications. So traditionally, as you may know, right, and uh, the legacy token is based on the use the secret. So when you create a service account, it automatically and uh, generates uh, secrets with the tokens. This token never and expired, so it's there secure. Also, the service accounts can be shared by multiple or different applications. So let's also make it less secure. So it's definitely it's not recommended, but unfortunately, in a lot of the clusters, legacy application and workload may still use the uh, old tokens and the legacy and the non leave the secret-based secret tokens. So now, of course, we are and moving to this and more dynamic and uh, time-limited tokens and acquire, obtain, and uh, buy from the token the request API. Then application or the Kubernetes will refresh, reload it automatically or periodically. And one example is the bond and uh, service token for the ports. Finally, there are still in the sum and the long-lived token. If you really need it, you can manually create a secret and associate with the uh, service account. And uh, that's another way and uh, support and the long-lived token. But unless it's must necessary, it's still not recommended and for long-lived tokens. So really the goal and uh, so we have been working on and uh, try to share with you discuss is how can we and uh, migrate, upgrade, right? And move from this and the legacy old uh, never expired tokens, right? To this more secure and dynamic and time bound tokens. The key challenge or the important thing is make sure, right? We are not going to break the current usage, disrupt the current workload use. So now I'm, I'm de deep in diving a little bit about and, uh, all different tokens. And uh, this is the legacy, very old, right? Automatically generate and a secret based token. So if you are familiar with the old version, right? Kubernetes, when you create a service account, it will automatically and generate, generate a, a secret with the tokens. So then bound to the, the port, it's never expired. And if you can, you can definitely share these tokens, right, across different ports if they use the same and uh, 
uh, service account. As here you can see, right, on the top, if a service account, it will have this and, uh, yeah, so, uh, okay, have a secret and uh, this name and reference. So it's a bidirectional reference, reference to this in the secret. And uh, inside of the secret, you will see and here, right, also have a service account and annotations is used to reference to the service account. So this is the, the old way to use this and the never, the, uh, never expired secret-based tokens. Of course, now and uh, we are moving to this and uh, time-bound tokens using the token request API. So you request uh, time-limited and uh, uh, tokens from the token request API. And here, example, right? You can see and uh, you get this and the token, their service account. Also, there are some expiration time and the last uh, use the time step and all this kind of the information. Important thing is, uh, yeah, also it's audience bound, right? Which and uh, yeah, particular ports and uh, this token is associated with. And definitely, it's have expiration time. One example is, yeah, since and the Kubernetes 121 and uh, this is called the bound service and uh, account token change uh, behavior, right? We used to create this and uh, automatically create this and uh, secret based uh, long live and uh, uh, service account token, then the secret is mounted as volume and uh, import. But now is the Kubernetes will obtain uh, token from the token request API, and now and mount it, right, this project volume. Then expiration time, and uh, by default now, and uh, yeah, it should be in the finally one hour, so then Kubernet will automatically and refresh that and renode that and uh, for the port running uh, using the service account and the token. But uh, in order to facilitate and uh, transition and upgrade, so now there are flag called uh, service account extend token expiration. So by default, that's true. And this means even it's expired. And then the token will be automatically and extend to one year, of course, after certain version in the future. And then this, you may, you should and uh, switch or change it to force then just to have this in the short time limited and tokens. So as you can see here, that's the project and uh, tokens. And uh, finally, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, you can still create some long-lived tokens and based on a secret, but uh, now you have to automatically uh, manually create it. It means you create a service count, it won't and automatically generate any of the uh, tokens or secret for you. And uh, you have to manually create another secret. Then you add annotation, special annotation, and reference this service account, then control plan will generate a, a long-lived token for this and the secret. This way, and also, if you delete this and uh, service account, this secrets and the tokens will be deleted as well. So this is different from the automatic one. This by directional reference, and uh, they are, could be shared across multiple and uh, service account. So very important thing here is, uh, yeah, it can be a little bit and, uh, confusing and uh, sometimes hard to learn. There are quite a bunch of the feature flags and the parameters that can control and uh, the token and uh, usage and uh, configurations and other thing. Here is a list of the uh, feature flags, feature gates, and the configuration and uh, flags that can use to control this token. For example, the first one basically and is, uh, is something wrong? Oh, okay, the power, okay. <laughs> I didn't notice that, <laughs> oh, okay. Thanks to the audience there. <laughs> okay, thank you, Andrea. <laughs> okay, so the bound service token volume, and this is enable, disable, right? This and uh, bound service token, and uh, service account extend, basically means, right, true means will automatically extend this expired port and the tokens in case you don't automatically and uh, uh, refresh it. And then the max token expiration, uh, of course, when you request a, a new token, time-bound token from token request API, you can specify 
uh, token and expiration time, but also the administrator can set a limit, right? A maximum and a expiration time. Also now, as I mentioned, even we are now migrating and uh, recommend and use the uh, time-bound tokens, but still, and uh, if you set this legacy service account token, no auto-generation uh, force, so you can still and uh, create this and automatically create this and uh, secrets and uh, uh, long-lived and uh, service token uh, uh, service account tokens. And last two is the last two more is about the tracking and clean up this and the service account tokens. So the tracking means, yeah, how do you track the, the, the legacy token use? Clean up means finally, do we need, it's a still working progress. It basically means, right, if a legacy token has not been used for a well, while, should we clean up, delete it? So if we talk about this, all these changes and the a lot of work going on, the impact on different uh, the use cases. And so if you look at that, we still have a lot of the old system and legacy applications and use this and uh, auto-generated secrets based on long-lived tokens. The good news is, yeah, until uh, so far, the Kubernetes 1.30, right? You can still use it. But then also you can still and uh, generate this and uh, automatically and uh, generate this no leave tokens, even if it's not highly not recommended, right? Unless it's necessary. And in Kubernetes 129, we will disable and uh, stop supporting these features. So definitely, I think the team and uh, should consider and uh, yeah, migrating now and how to migrate it. Also, and uh, after Kubernetes 130 and uh, its working progress. We'll talk about this and uh, how to clean up the existing and uh, legacy and the tokens. So that's what you can plan and uh, yeah, the transition upgrade uh, properly. So the, the second is, yeah, so now since Kubernetes 121, it's beta 122, it's GA, right? We use this project volume and this bound service token. So the Kubernetes and we refresh and get uh, new tokens for a port, right, automatically from the token request API. The good news is most applications, and it should still work, in particular applications, if you use the standard and the library, and then it should automatically reload and the tokens from right on the disk if anything changes. But of course, and if, if the application, whatever reason, you use very and old, outdated, and the library, right, it didn't and renewed this and the new tokens. So one thing, as I mentioned earlier, this service account extend the token expiration, right? We can still use it and the set is true. Now the default is true. Can extend and the token expiration to one year. And after 126, and most likely, and you want to make sure and the port, right, and the project volume and port tokens and use a short, yeah, the expiration time, like a default is an hour. Finally, and uh, later, and uh, James will deep dive into, if you have some external system, right, use the token, so secret, that's going to be challenging, right? How can you upgrade it? Also, once you use the dynamic one, how can you make sure and uh, the system can use this new and uh, generated tokens, access the uh, talk to interact with your Kubernetes clusters? Here is a summary and all these different features, future gates and may apply to different cases. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, you can use this as a reference and see which one and is applicable to which cases you will find it useful. So another interesting thing, right? We talk about a lot of the features and the different cases and how to upgrade it. I think the most important thing, right, and uh, observability, right, you need to understand uh, so, so far and uh, what's the current use of your token. So the good news and fortunately, yeah, and upstream, and uh, yeah, we also contributed uh, recently a PR to the Kubernetes is uh, we can track the different token usages. One is uh, the API server audit log now already and the record and uh, quite a few and uh, different uh, the events with the annotations. For example, even we extend the token uh, uh, expiration, right? But uh, some 
already expired, right? So this still token you can fight from the audit log. The second thing is this, and uh, the legacy token, right, automatically generated by control plan, and you can also identify this type of tokens. The third one and is the menu and create secrets, right? Then generate the long-lived tokens. You can use this and uh, by looking into the auditor's API server audit log, you can find all this. And here are some examples of different annotations in audit logs. And uh, the second, second is also now there are a bunch of metrics you can use to look at see how many stale tokens, right, and legacy tokens, or different type of tokens, and still running or still are being used in your system. So all this information, of course, and uh, we believe it will be very helpful, useful, right, for administrator and uh, to understand uh, so the current status of your cluster and how all different tokens been used. Then you can, based on this data, right, make a decision and when, right, the customer should migrate, which feature uh, gate you should turn on, disable, enable, and make sure on one hand can make this and the token more secure, right, and uh, manage it properly without disrupting and your current use, right? It's very critical. You don't want the custom page you and uh, me and I said my, my application now and uh, yeah, cannot and, uh, access the API server or yeah, not working anymore. Okay, then next uh, and uh, James and uh, we'll talk about, yeah, show some examples, yeah, how you could and uh, upgrade or migrate your tokens and also how to integrate external system and with the Kubernetes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. thanks very much. So as you can probably tell from all of this, there are a lot of options. There's a lot of knobs to turn and a lot of things to tune. So we kind of, this is an example of like how you could go through this um, and like ways that you can gradually migrate users across rather than like an all in one, everything breaks uh, for, well, we suddenly surprise users who can say like your tokens are gonna expire in a month's time, you better roll out some changes to your software to re roll, uh, rotate your tokens. So the first thing that we'd recommend doing, well, we'd say you could do, maybe. I don't want to recommend that you make your clusters less secure, but we need to get there somehow, uh, is actually extending that, uh, that duration that we do things for. So allowing up to a year, which I think is the maximum supported in Kubernetes. Um, so allowing up to a year um, for your tokens to expire. So that means anyone submitting a request through the token request API can ask for up to a year. Um, we then also enable like automatically making pods tokens valid for one year. So that helps to like prevent your current running workloads suddenly getting disrupted. One year here is chosen as a number because it's you know quite a long time and gives you enough time to try and get through these remaining migration steps and reach out. I think one of the most essential things here though is tracking, which is why there's so many of these parameters that uh, Yuan's talked about here. Um, because you're going to need to work with these teams, work with these uh, individuals to actually make sure that they are updating, uh, send warnings, and potentially even generate, you know, emails, whatever else, notifications to actually speak with them. Um, yeah. So the other thing as well is you probably have some people who are still using long-lived tokens. And that, you know, touched on, we'll get to in a bit, the external systems often, you know, we've historically gone and created a service account borrowed the token, dumped it into some other secret store or something else, CI pipeline. Um, that's probably going to have to continue for now. Um, so, yeah, re, well, disabling the feature gate, the polarity of these things can be a bit confusing, but uh, basically service count, legacy service count token, no auto generation, setting that to false to allow you to, uh, to, allow you to continue generating those secrets by default um, so that those who expect a secret to exist can then well, it continues to exist. Um, so yeah, as you go further along, and this is kind of, again, time is passing here. I think throughout this whole thing, you're looking at these metrics, you're assessing what the impact of these things are, um, and going from there. So I, I will say this is an example of a plan. If no one's listening, you might need to go back and revisit some of this plan and uh, adjust accordingly or get them to listen. Um, but yeah, the next thing that we can start looking at doing is disabling that automatic generation of the secrets for each service account. So this will then require that people annotate their secret, like create a secret object and annotate them. So this, again, there's no magic to this. This is gonna require communication, people actually working 
and making changes to their processes. Um, and that's why, obviously, we focus on why we're doing this, to actually build a more secure posture to begin with. Um, gradually, and here we've got one month, I think, you know, we need to consider what we choose, but gradually reducing that maximum token expiration. Um, again, this is going to have to be based on your progress with, like, actually getting people to update. And that's why having these tracking things in the audit log, having things like the uh, metrics we talked about, is essential. And, uh, I, yeah, you're probably going to need at least someone uh, to sit there and really drive this effort to make sure it works, um, or make sure it's on track. Um, so, yeah, as you talk about here, or disabling... Sorry, the polarity on this one always confuses me because we've got a no and a true and a false. Um, but then disabling that automatic generation. Um, as we go further along, and now, like, we've started to set a bit of a path here, we continue to actually reduce this, um, reduce that maximum expiration time. Uh, yeah, we disable automatically extending that on pods so people can then go and customize things themselves still if they need to, but um, just gradually reducing this down. Uh, over time, down to, yeah, the actual default of one hour. So it sounds very simple when you put it up on a screen like this, because I think we're skipping out the bit where we go around with our users and continuously try and get them to do it, and then they don't listen, and you get them to do it again. Um, and then as well, in 128, we actually have the ability to enable the uh, legacy service account tracking, uh, token tracking feature gate. Now, that will actually automatically, um, it will automatically annotate our service account objects, or secret objects, I have to remember. Secret. Um, secret, thank you, Jordan. Um, yeah, they, yeah, this one can enable you, allow you to track that the last use, right, the time step of the last use of this legacy one. So you can base this, basically can use to clean up yeah. the unused legacy tokens. Yeah, so that's really useful for actually understanding, like we might have, obviously we're going to have potentially thousands or however many service account tokens as secrets in your cluster. We don't actually know if they're used. Like they might not be being used at all, especially if these are for like workloads running in pods, they're now using projected tokens, so the secrets aren't actually being used anymore. Um, so by having this feature enabled, we can see that and we can start building you know, dashboards, whatever else. And as you see in a minute, when it comes to 130, we can actually start to uh, automatically delete and clean up these uh, unused secrets. So that overall kind of gets us slightly closer to a more secure place. Uh, because we don't leave a load of unexpired tokens around, because these are still genuine tokens associated with a service account that's got RBAP permissions to do things. So these are security risks already. Um, so by actually deleting them, we can automatically clean, well, we have a controller, automatically cleans them up and uh, prevents them from being used again because they don't exist anymore. So, yeah, that touches on kind of like a lot of the workloads in Kubernetes, like your pod objects and so on. I th well, yeah, your pods, uh, where you get your projected tokens. External systems can be a little bit trickier um, because ultimately we are making a change. Like previously, you know, you, unbeknownst to you, to you, or perhaps not intentionally, you've allowed people to go and create a credential that never expires, can be used forever, really convenient to drop into your CI pipeline or something like that. And you're, you know, your users are probably going to be a bit unhappy that they can't do that anymore. Um, and it is going to require a different approach. So. There's kind of two ways to do it, and I, I think some of you may have seen, I think last year or so, uh, you can get things like federated OIDC. Um, this is, again, stepping outside of service account tokens. These aren't service account tokens anymore. This is technically a different auth method, it happens to use JWTs. Um, but yeah, something like that. Well, in fact, I'll go to the next slide. Um, yeah, this is a very effective method, I think, uh, depending on the capabilities of the external system you're working with. So if you have some form of identity um, identity document in your external system, you can utilize that to actually pivot into a token that could be used to authenticate. Um, I mean, depending on your identity document, you might just be able to do it straight away. It's kind of the cheating one because it relies on your external system running in an environment that has an identity that you can then use to pivot into something for Kubernetes. The Alternative that we can do, um, which, I mean, it still relies on service account tokens, but it's, uh, yeah, it's certainly more portable and easier, is probably something closer to how the Kubelet, the Kubelet sort of works today, where the Kubelet does have a long-lived credential, which it uses to go and actually interact with the API server 
on behalf of your pods to get those tokens. And that is to actually have, have some form of long-lived credential, um, which you can then utilize. That only has permission to actually go and request a short-lived token um, on its behalf. So again, you have something long-lived, but in this, in this instance, you've got a little bit more control, or at least tracking, over, um, over like how these things are used. That leads nicely on to the final piece I want to mention, which is a recently merged feature um, around credential identifiers. So because we now have the idea of um, you know, going from a long-lived to a short-lived token, those short-lived tokens will have some kind of identifier that is unique to that specific token. Now, because we're going from a long-lived to a short-lived there, each time we do that, they, we actually have an identifier for that, that like issuance. And, by like, tracking these things back, we can see when they're first used, when they're first issued. So if there is some kind of an issue, we can actually track this stuff back. This is an alpha feature in uh, Kubernetes 129, which I don't think is out yet, no. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's another feature that we've kind of got that kind of helps us to actually build our posture here in the meantime, whilst we actually develop uh, like further capabilities in um, the, our external systems too. So yeah, to kind of summarize here, um, newer Kubernetes versions are using time-bound tokens via the token request API. The Kubelet's doing this for you by default. Uh, the API server's making sure your pods get these credentials if they need them. Um, we're gradually moving away from long-lived auto-generated tokens. And this is gonna be a long migration, I think, um, for most of us. I think it very much depends on the type of workloads you run and how you run them. Um, tracking is key. Tracking, monitoring all these things, communication, feedback loops on that, how effective is your communication. It's almost you know, like running a big SEO campaign internally um, for yourselves to actually make sure that these things are effective. Uh, and that in itself is a whole other can of worms that we're not even touching on in this talk. Um, there are a lot of feature gates. There's a lot of options, there's a lot of parameters, and it's important to actually get familiar with them to really understand how we do them. Uh, and yeah. I think we've just got a few acknowledgements because along the way we've had quite a lot of people helping on this. Um, and aside from that, thank you very much for attending the talk. Um, thank you very much for attending the talk. And if you've got any more questions, then we've got some time to answer them. Yeah, please provide your feedback and uh, oh, yeah. appreciate it. There's a big QR thank code you. here to scan. Thanks for staying so late and <laughs> during our session. Oh, okay. If you have a question, please use the microphone. To speak from over there. And if you don't, then we'll be around here anyway. If you yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak in this then room. No questions. It's good. <laughs> cool. Oh, good one. All right. How close do I need to get? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, great. So I guess, uh, you know, as we're moving towards these time-based expired um, tokens and you've got this automatic uh, process to rotate credentials, even during the span of a lifetime of a, you know, container, um, how do you, like, how are you approaching kind of what needs to take place in the application itself to, like, discover that that's changed and it needs to, uh, you know, absorb or understand that that change is required because it's now like a config change? in the life of the, you know, container. So, uh, yeah, so, so like we mentioned, uh, the tracking and uh, the different uh, cases is important. So the idea and or the plan we are proposing here is uh, you shouldn't let legacy tokens still and running, working, and uh, by the same time, you monitor collected data, like the annotation in the API server or the log. You identify that, yes, it's still working, right? Take some proactive actions, then you can audit and uh, identify the applications. It could stop working after, right? We stop supporting the legacy token. So that's why we think these annotations and the event log are very important. And that's help you identify and, uh, who are the potential, right? Workloads or custom. They are still using the old legacy tokens. And then working with them and come up with a plan, right? How to migrate it. This is the we and I'm vision. Yeah. I think the other side in like terms of what we recommend to those users when we reach out to them, um, if you're using like an up-to-date version of client go, 
for example, that will automatically uh, be able to like see that a token has changed and refresh that. Um, it kind of comes down to client support, and I think that forms part of your communication strategy is making sure that you are understanding, you know, how they're doing, like what they're doing, how they're doing it. Um, that's the big fuzzy hole in this whole thing that is very difficult for us to actually really say because it's very organization specific. Like it's reaching out to people. It could be, you know, looking into the audit log, looking at user agents to try and you know understand what kind of client they're running. Um, and it very much depends on what kind of platform you're running. Because if you've got kind of, if it's just you running your cluster, it's probably a little bit easier. You understand your own workloads and applications. If you're running a larger platform where you don't necessarily control these things, uh, that's why you need to extend it to a year. Or, yeah, I don't want to say more because you're not allowed to do more. Uh, but yeah, you've got to come up with something. Thanks. All right, speaking of more, what is the max duration you could set for this time bound token? So I th the maximum you can extend it to, I, from what I understand, I've got the two people who did it here in front of me, but I think it's one year, um, hence one year. Uh, beyond that, like we're gradually reducing that default. So I think one hour is eventually where we're trying to get to, so that we have like constantly rotating things going on. Got it. And does it always need some sort of developer? So I work for defense, and I have to field this, and we have an air gap. So once it's underway and fielded, I, I can't have access to it as a developer for X amount of years. So with this auto generation of token or going to time-bound time tokens, do I still have the ability to rotate it or refresh it, or do I need to send some sort of support to constantly update this? So if this is like a... You mean for like a, a, a token mounted into a pod or something? Yeah. Yeah. So that, the kubelet will automatically do that for you. So it, I, sometime before it expires, it's going to actually go and fetch a new one using the token request API again, talk to the API server, fetch a new token, and make it available. It is up to your application or your workload to actually notice that. So using up-to-date client libraries and whatever else is you know, essential. Okay. All right. Thank you. Hey, hi. So in one of your slides, you mentioned something about the stale tokens. So does this token request API deletes the stale tokens as well with the version 1.30 plus? Yeah, I, I think you probably mentioned, yeah, there are some metrics and uh, also, yeah, the stale tokens, right? Yeah. 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 The stale tokens means, yeah, now we, 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 migrate to this and the time bound tokens, right? And, right. Uh, but with some feature flag, right? A feature gate, we are still supporting even you, right? Ex automatically extended, but we are and uh, we are warning and you, right? And uh, some of your tokens already and uh, expire. And uh, so it's still working, oh, but still it's working. with the expired tokens. Yeah. So yeah. this also give you an idea, right? Like the previous question and uh, so how can you identify the potential, right, and the workload or customers and that could be broken, right, in future if we and, uh, disable this auto, or auto extension, yeah. Because mm. if the token's stale, it implies that the client hasn't actually reloaded it from disk or whatever else. So, you know, they're kind of like warning indicators. Reach out to those people, well, sometime in the next year at least, um, but pretty promptly. Sure. And, and you mentioned something about the tracking of the what do you call the long-lived tokens? So uh, how do you use those trackings for like uh, to delete automatically with the version 1.30 plus? Or, uh, yeah, for that one, and uh, yeah, it's still, I, I believe, and uh, yeah, it's not uh, GA and uh, yet. Okay. So that feature basically, like I said, this tracking means a wheel track and the user config map store the time step of that token that been used last time. So then when this is enabled, you can get each token and the last and the use the time step. Then in future, uh, in future in version 130, and I think the plan is, then you can based on that said, if a token has not been used then longer than one year or a certain period of uh, time, this token will be deleted. Okay, I see. That tracking feature basically means uh, should I and record and uh, the time step of the okay. token used. I see. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank it's you. a new feature and uh, still and working in progress, I believe. Anymore? Okay, if there are no more questions, and uh, thanks again for coming to our session and uh, enjoying the rest of your day, and uh, thank you very much.